started here? I'm Michelle Kostelucky, and I'm here to introduce Jill Hemstra, and she's going to talk to us about can face-to-face -face professional conferencing enhance virtual teams. And I just wanted to remind you that we're going to be um, live streamed here, so if you have any questions, you'll need to speak into the mic so those out in the field can hear, hear you. All right, Jill. That's good. Thank you. I'm going to apologize in advance to our webcast person back there. I'm going to move around way too much, I'm sure. I will do my best to keep it in, in check. Um, which COPs do we have represented here? What are some of the groups that you guys are with? Trailhogs. OK. Any others? Evaluation? OK. So um, anybody in this room believe that meeting face-to-face -face does not have value for a virtual team? OK. So we've established the basic principle here that even in a virtual collaboration that sitting down face-to-face -face has a lot of value. And over the years, our group, um, I, I'll start here with the background, we focus on animal ag and environmental stewardship which I keep telling people is a nice way of saying we talk about manure a lot. Uh, it's a very multidisciplinary group. We've got engineers, economists, animal scientists, agronomists, um, a lot of different professional sorts of organizations involved in our group. Um, we officially became the Livestock and Poultry Environmental Learning Center in 2005, although the roots of this project go back further than that, the people that make up the core, have been collaborating for a longer period of time than that. And it started as a national facilitation project grant from what used to be CSREES, is now NIFA. And we, are, we're, we came to eExtension and said, we've got our own money. We think we've got great ideas. Will you take us? And, and they finally did in 2006. But I think we had to bug you guys for a while to get you to take us. Um, Three different ways that over the years our group has met face to face, and I'm going to try to focus on things that I think other groups might find useful in, in each of these. We actually have done a standalone national professional conference. It was a massive undertaking, and round two is in planning and will be a year from now. Um, we've done, and I, by we, I mean individual people within the, the group individual projects that fund the COP have sponsored a section at an existing conference. They might fund a lunch speaker, fund a session um, to get the speakers there, things like that. And we've done some very informal ones. Um, I'm guessing a lot of your COPs do this as well. Do you have professional conferences where you know a lot of your members are going to be? And so you try to schedule a half a day somewhere in there to get together and plan? Well, we've done some of those as well. There's a couple of things we've done in that informal one that I thought might be interesting and really benefited the group as far as our web content and not just, just uh, planning. So by informal, I mean we weren't a sponsor or a host at any type of an event. We did some team planning, some team building. Um, the social aspect of that is pretty important. How many of you feel like even if your team members see each other and just go out for supper, you've probably got to win? I think that's a very valuable thing as well. And then it's a good way to make efficient use of travel money. Most of us, anybody here have more travel money than they can spend? Yeah, I didn't think I'd see very many hands. I don't know if any of the online folks, you're, you're welcome to put your thumb up or something, or raise your hand too if you um, want to answer a question. The first one I'm going to quickly talk about is the standalone conference. Waste to Earth, Spreading Science and Solutions, which is only a slight manure joke or a slight manure pun in the, in the title. And that conference was held in April of last year in Denver. And why did we actually go to the trouble of hosting a national face-to-face -face conference? Well, there was two reasons. One, as I mentioned, our group is very multidisciplinary. We've got the engineers, the economists, the agronomists, um, animal scientists, all those types of folks. And they all help go to the animal science meetings, the engineering meetings, the economics meetings. Occasionally, I think the engineers drag the economists to your engineering meetings. And that's a party, folks. Get the economists and the engineers together. <laughs> but uh, and I'm an animal scientist, so I can make fun of both of them. Uh, we also have some really tremendous leadership in our COP. 
people that really wanted to make this happen. So there was a real void of having a national manure conference. And it's not just manure. Stewardship and animal ag is about grazing. It's about a lot of other things as well. But probably 85% of what we talk about really does revolve around manure, manure management. We had no idea what to expect. We got 250 people to come to this conference. And in my mind, it was a COP meeting. Whether or not those people knew that they're members of our COP, I regarded it as a large COP meeting. People working in this area, by default, are part of our network. They may not have officially signed up in extension.org. A lot did as a result of this conference. But it really worked um, well, I think, to, to get a lot of good content and information from people. Well, clearly, the goal of many national conferences is professional development. We were trying to attract new members and new content. One of the things that we did, I don't know if it's on the next slide here, but we did a completely online proceedings. As a result of this conference, there's about 160 new pages of web content that became part of our site. So every presentation, they wrote a one, we called it a one-page paper for their presentation. We recorded everything at the conference. That was an undertaking. Um, Leslie and I were running from room to room, but we got probably 90% of it successfully recorded. And everybody's slides that were submitted, we put them up on our SlideShare site. And of course, you work with people that might be uncomfortable with things like that. You know, if they didn't want it downloaded or they didn't want it there at all, we accommodated all of that. But we had like 158, 159 sets of slides put on SlideShare. A couple years ago, when we had a team meeting, our team members asked, is there a place where we can put a whole bunch of PowerPoint slides so that we can look through and see what other people have done? Bingo, we did it for them. SlideShare, unfortunately, is not the greatest way to find and sort through things, but I think it will get better over time. So we met one of the needs of our team by doing this conference. I'm not going to bore you with all the evaluation, but some of the goals we had were to get new members, to really increase the comfort level with people, to make them look at new topics or new pieces they could add to their, their programming. And you can see I picked the best pieces out of the evaluation, which said people really felt more motivated in their programming. They felt more comfortable becoming a part of our COP. And they felt like they'd really learned something. They were going to incorporate new things into their, into their programs. I'll show you a quick look at the proceedings, what those ended up looking like, if it comes up. It's probably not critical if it doesn't. There's the proceedings, the main page. I look at the, the air quality ones that we pulled out. We broke them down topically. But here's just an example of what one of the pages looks like. You can see the, the everything the author submitted. This wasn't one of the better examples as far as breaking up text, but we didn't touch anything they did. Um, we even told them we weren't going to correct spelling and grammar, although we couldn't stand it and did it in a few cases. Um, but the recording is put in there. The slides are in here. And in both cases, the YouTube recording, the slide share slides, both have a link back to this page. That's pretty important for us in using these other sites as ways to help people find information. Because YouTube and SlideShare have been, yes, perfect have been pretty tremendous at helping us um, drive traffic. Oops, I don't want to close all of them, do I? There. The, the piece here that I thought might be intriguing, how many of you actually feel like your group would host its own national conference or international conference at that level? 
Okay. That's more than I thought would be in here. That's excellent. One of the other ways, and Rick is in here because he's especially been active at this piece of it, is to sponsor a speaker, sponsor a session at an existing conference. And how many of you ever have known a conference to turn down a sponsor? No, they, it's really one of the big issues in, in getting a conference going. And so when you can find a partner that wants to actually pay some of the expenses, it's a really great thing. And as a result of some of the work Rick and others have done, and in that, you really can foster ties to these organizations. They see you as a partner, not as a competitor. You can work on recruiting new members. Sometimes they'll let you put your propaganda in their registration packets. You can have, or they'll let you maybe have a booth, or you can have handouts and have a booth, things like that. Bringing, um, you can bring an, a topic to the agenda that you think might be overlooked in the rest of the organization. Oftentimes you can get a recording done of your session that you sponsor, papers, whatnot. Again, add it to your website content. If you'll follow our group very much at all in the future, you'll find out that a very common refrain is, well, while we're at it, we're very good at adding things on and coming up with, well, let's get something for the website or something for the YouTube channel or something for, um, for whatever piece of product that, that we want while we're doing it. And then we also have some planning time, group meets, do some COP business. Another really great thing about sponsoring a session is you get an evaluation opportunity. And I'm glad Mike's here because he's probably going, yay, evaluation. You, you can uh, do things like focus groups or surveys. One thing that Rick did at one that he sponsored um, some lunchtime speakers that I thought was really fascinating was a stakeholder conversation. He brought the industry speakers in. They did their spiel at lunch. And then later in that afternoon, he just asked them to come sit down and talk with some of the members of our COP. And we just, it was nothing formal, nothing recorded. We just took a lot of notes and asked them, what do you think is the future of your industry, the education piece of it? Where can a group like ours partner with you, help you? And that was an incredibly valuable conversation. Um, and it ha we happen to have one of our NRCS partners in this picture here, um, who was a tremendous help at our conference. Um, and as you know, there's different ways to sponsor at conferences. You can just be their platinum sponsor and give them $10,000 if you find $10,000 in the couch cushions. Uh, travel costs for the speakers, that it's kind of an unknown, but usually you can get a pretty good handle on what you'll be uh, committing to. Let's see, I don't know if I got the info. And on the, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. So future direction, as I mentioned, we're well underway. We just got back from a site visit in Seattle. A couple of the things that we'd really like to do is we're trying to build in more hangout spaces for people where they can sit and meet and collaborate. We're going to try to offer um, reduced rates for students in exchange for doing tasks for us, like putting things on the Facebook page, Twitter, record, helping with the recordings, uh, pieces like that, because not only are they good slave labor, but they're also going to be going off into careers where they'll be planning conferences in the future. Some of these skills and getting a look at the backside of conference planning is, is a good thing for our uh, students. One thing I forgot to mention on the informal uh, meeting that we do, one of the meetings where we did that was regional research groups like the S1025, S1032. They meet annually and they give an annual report. They actually write it up and talk to each other about the progress of each of their pieces of the overall project. And even though we weren't an official sponsor, we were just kind of a tag along there, um, our great leadership team got the folks to agree to use a common template for their reports. They gave them to us. We slapped them up as 30 nice research summaries on our website. And it was a really nice addition. The, the research summary, I think there's been a lot of conversations around how do we get just information about cutting edge research and it was fairly, um, fairly painless, you know, you, asking him to use a template and, and follow that theme, and we were able to get it in and, and publish them. So I think it's been a good, a good collaboration to work with groups like that in, in a variety of ways, formal and informal. So with that, I will end, and if you have questions or an area where you'd like 
like me to elaborate, I would be glad to do that. So I'm going to turn it around a little bit for you. So now that you've had the face-to-face -face conferences, have you thought about repackaging it as a virtual conference Oh, at all? Because we've been challenged to do that. We actually live web streamed a portion of this conference. Um, I think that it was a good thing. And the recordings afterwards were a lot more intriguing. As far as repackaging as a virtual conference, Yes, with the online proceedings, it's essentially a virtual conference. People can go through the old agenda. They can go through it by topic. They can search by author. And, and we've tried to put all these web pages up. I don't know if you saw the tiny little Waste to Worth logo. We tried to make it very clear that each of these pages is part of this conference and that you had an opportunity to go through that. And you can see the, the recordings. There's all kinds of ide nebulous ideas floating around, like a virtual poster ses session. We had a couple of speakers that um, we're trying to come from Canada, and their agency was changing around its red tape, and so they couldn't get their approvals in time. And we tried to find a way if we can webcast them in, and they could still do their presentations, even though they didn't get to the conference. Um, doing things along the lines of all the back channel social media type things. We did a little bit of it, but there's a lot more that could be done in that way. Is that what you mean by a right. virtual conference? Right, and, and you're right. It's kind of an endless array of designs that you can kind of go with. Mm -hmm. But it seems, you know, the content's there. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to keep it going. So Yeah, it seems like you have this great cutting edge research being presented. Why just let it die there in that in that room? People walk out and maybe they got a good idea or a contact, but can we help other people find it and help raise the prominence of this knowledge that they're creating? Any other questions? I might ask Rick to comment a little bit on some of the stakeholder conversations and the evaluation opportunities, what some of the projects that you've managed have gained from, from doing some of these. Well, the comment, uh, main comment I was going to make is uh, by no means do we have a, a real firm grasp on this, but I think there's a lot of value to spending time deciding when are you going to collaborate with someone else's conference or activities, and when are you going to have your own prominent um, COP conference. And and because uh, it's really you gain a lot of collaboration, a lot of buy-in when you participate and when you go to somebody else's event, and you you're engaging, you're building up engagement when you do that. And yet you, you have to have some sort of leadership role in terms of having your own event. So um, that's, that's probably the biggest thing that we've been spending a lot of time on lately. Thank you. Is there any other questions before we close? All right. Will you join with me in thanking Jill for her presentation?